Vice Chair Will. I can call the meeting to order. Could we call the roll? Mr. Brennan? Present. Mr. Burgess? Present. Mr. Walker? Here. You have a quorum? Okay. Uh, the adoption of the agenda. Do I have a motion? Make motion. Make a motion to adopt the agenda. Second. Okay. Question. Um, do we? It's, excuse me. Ms. Ms. Bleaton can't make the motion because oh. she's not a member of the committee. Right. Well, I'll make the motion since it's already been seconded by uh, Mr. Brennan. Question for staff. Do we have to ha include any more details um, under item number five, executive session? To the, that triggers us going into executive session? Or is it is is the way it's depicted on the agenda enough? Now, that might be a um, damn question. Attorney question. That's an attorney question. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, good morning. The the rule is that that you're supposed to be specific. So, for example, you would go into executive session to discuss a real estate matter or executive session to discuss a personnel matter related to X, Y, Z. So um, probably the more specific, the better. Um, and I would say a lot of this discussion probably needs to not be an executive session um, unless you're specifically talking about a property or potential contracts. I think just talking about the vision for the future is probably not an executive session item unless it involves real estate or potential contracts. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna call the roll for adoption of the agenda. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Purgis? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, and uh, item number three, we have to put back to the uh, chair. <clears throat> so for a nomination, a formal nomination? For election of committee chair. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Burgess? Yes. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, if I may be recognized? Yes. I move that we nominate uh, Mr. Brennan as chair. If we, if uh, Mr. Walker, if we... Uh, Follow our bylaws. The chair has to appoint committee chair. Oh, okay. Well, you know what, Mr. Vice, Mr. Vice Chair. Mr. Vice Chair, yeah. yes. well, Mr. Vice Chair, to thank you for that correction. I thought I was on county council. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I forgot. So thank you. Okay, I see what you're saying, now, Ms. Burgess. Yes, I understand. Yes. But but we can go on the item of. Okay. Recursion and action items, structure meeting, future plans. Is that? Is this, I believe this is um, Franny Heiser's input. <clears throat> so, um, one of the things that, that y'all might want to discuss today and would be appropriate for open session is what's the goal of this committee? What do y'all see as your deliverable um, at the end of, of the process? And some, you know, back in 2012, the comment had just finished something called Vision 2020. And that vision was referenced in the um, ordinance adopted by Richland County. It wasn't specifically part of the, of the question, I don't think. But um, I, I would think that that's one of the things that y'all would want to talk about is um, what goals, what aspirations, what plans for the new penny um, would y'all like to share with the public through the the, um, the ordinance adopted by um, county council. So this would be something that could be an attachment um, as county council adopts um, the ordinance. The other thing that, that y'all might want to discuss is uh, what is going to be the ask? What's going to be the request? Are we, in the, for the existing penny, I, I think the comment is in for 29 point something percent. Um, that number came through 
it, it was the result of sausage being made and there was a lot of blood and guts and intestines left on the on the wall as, as those decisions were made but um i don't know if it'll be a smoother process this time but um at some point i think the comment is going to need to officially make a request of county council as to um the amount or how the comment would like to participate so I would say your big topics are what to ask county council for and how to describe um, what the voters are going to get uh, with the new penny. Now, this won't be a, a new penny. This will be a continuation, right? That is correct. It's a continuation. So it's not a new penny. It's the next penny. And realistically, um, yeah, the, the penny can be imposed for up to 25 years or until a certain amount is reached. In, in this situation, with um, we're facing the, the dollar amount um, has been reached or will be reached way before the 25-year um, the mark. So um, I would see maybe the county doing a couple of things. One is to um, have a higher estimate of what the, the penny will bring in uh, during this next period of time and um, and maybe still be prepared to complete projects as quickly as possible so that a third penny um, out into the future uh, could be well received by the public. And as y'all do your work, one of the things we might want to do is, is circulate a copy of the Vision 2020 and um, let y'all get a feel for how those things were expressed um, in 2012. Mr. Vice Chair. Yes. I think now is probably a good time for us to get feedback from um, Comet staff and then also um, any, any consultants working with the county <clears throat> on the extended penny tax for us for an update and then a, a what a kind of a maybe a summary of what we need to provide. Uh, for 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 them information wise, I know we, I know Pam and her team has, have done a great job putting together a good a good presentation that shows the snapshot of all the great things the Comet's done um, since the inception of the first penny. But moving forward, I, I think it's it's wise for us to hear from maybe Councilman Walker if he, if he has any insights as well as what what we need to provide through this committee because I do think. Well, as we have discussed in the broader board, we, we have a pretty tight window to, to get good quality information about all the great things we're doing at the Common now and in the future to the county. So that would be, I, I guess that would be my suggestion uh, for us to hear, Mr. Vice Chair. Okay, I, I have a question to uh, Mr. Walker. I'll um, listen to Mr. Burgess. On the breakouts, uh, on the county projects, how, how this continuation of the penny will be broken out. Has the county decided what they're going to do with the penny? As, and at what point, what percentage they anticipate the uh, comment getting of the penny? No, uh, Mr. Fergus, the uh, council has not decided what percentage uh, of penny revenues will be allocated for the comment. Uh, I believe currently that number under the current penny, that is, it's a little over 28%, uh, somewhere between 28 and 29% as um, as Heiser stated. Uh, but I think what our committee uh, ought to be tasked with doing is providing um, council, and, and maybe it has to be the full board, but at least we can start with our committee is providing council, uh, I guess, with a list, if you will, of the needs of the comment. Obviously, we want to keep the buses going and we know about, you know, as well as um, making sure there's enough funding for operations. But I would think that the needs of the comment go beyond just the operations, uh, because I, I think that whatever the needs are, whatever that price tag is, that will ultimately um, dictate the percentage. Uh, that council will probably be willing to assign, if you will, uh, to the comment. Uh, Stantec, uh, which is the third party vendor that we hired, 
uh, recently completed their needs assessment of uh, transportation projects in the county. Now that needs assessment did not include on uh, transit because again, uh, you know, only the comment uh, can tell county council uh, what is it that we need, right? Uh, so that's kind of where things are right now. We're still, uh, we are trying to, you know, well, first of all, council, had, we haven't even settled on what all the projects are going to be either, right? So we know we have this needs assessment, but then council has to decide, uh, you know, if we're going to take unfunded projects from the current penny and roll those over into the new penny, which could also, you know, uh, impact the budget. Uh, but I can tell you that there are three rubrics that we are looking at or categories uh, for uh, the continuation of the penny. One is what we call community um, community investment, like sidewalks, streets, dirt roads, shared use paths, that sort of thing. Second is what we call uh, county uh, county improvements, which is more so these big projects like uh, state roads, intersections, and the like. And then that third category is the common. So we've already, you know, have sort of an outline of what the categories are going to be. But what we're waiting on uh, is for the comment to provide the uh, county what our needs are. And so I guess we can talk about if we want to hire uh, a vendor to go out and perform a needs assessment uh, for transit. I'm not sure if that's something that this committee could authorize or if that would have to be authorized by the full board. But does that answer your question, uh, Mr. Purgis? Uh, I know yes. that was saying a lot, but that's saying a lot, but that's but that that's what's happening as we speak uh, over at County Council. But I'm I'm thinking on on the comment side, it has to be in there of how much we've spent or the penny already up to date. Mm -hmm. Going forward, it has to be some improvement in service which will cost an increased penny. You know, I don't think we can go, I'll take anybody else's input, go to the public and nothing change in the service. No, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, we're, we're, we're in reaction mode now right. with the growth that we're seeing. And so I think that is definitely part of the narrative to keep up with, with better, better service. <laughs> Well, let me ask this question now, uh, Mr. Vice Chair, um, because this is my first rodeo as far as a penny campaign, if you will. Um, how did the comment, I guess, sort of get going the last time around in terms of, um, I guess, providing to the, the county, um, you know, I guess our needs? Because what's been shared with me is that they the council doesn't want comment to just come come before them and say, "Hey, we got twenty eight, twenty nine percent in the current um, penny, so we want that same percentage." It's going to be based off of the needs of the comments. So, for instance, like they are projecting with penny two point oh, let's just call it that. But they're projecting uh, that over the course of fifteen years, a penny uh, will generate two point two billion. And that's just because the value of the mill has gone up with all the economic development that's taken place in the county over the last four years. And certainly, you know, with mm -hmm. Scout Motors coming and so on. And so I think the current penny, I think it's 22 years, a little over 1 billion. Well, we're going to reach that number uh, or collect in full by December 2026. But with uh, penny 2.0, we're talking about 2.2 billion. Uh, within 15 years. So, uh, but I think we just need to figure out what our needs are, what that is going to cost, and then we can present that uh, to council. So again, back in 2012, the um, we had just undertaken and completed what was called Vision 2020. The um, Thing, Rick Silver and I are probably the only folks in the room that, that were actively involved back, back then. And a couple of things had happened. 
Um, Derek Huggins came over from the university and was sort of like an interim uh, ED or and or a consultant. And so he created or the comment created a vision 2020. And that was really sort of the roadmap or the outline of what the comet was asking for. I don't think that there was, that there were any numbers associated with that vision uh, because honestly, it, it was really a, a political decision as to, to what the comet was gonna get. So maybe this year it would be more, this time it would be more needs driven. And the other comment I would make is that in part the, um, the sort of education campaign or, or the actual push for the penny was almost grounded in, in transportation. It was, it was like the, the argument was we've got to have the bus system, we have to have transit, and then the, um, uh, all the transportation projects that the county will do will be good, but we really need the, the, the transit system. And um, Right. Rick, are, are you in the room? Do you have a different recollection about how that went down? No, no ma'am. It, it's exactly the same. The, the, it was created in a crisis in the Comet, and it wasn't the Comet at the time. The transportation system is what created that crisis because they ran out of their secondary funding from the deal with, with SCANA at the time. And it was either to, for the capital city not to have a public transportation system, period or to do it, ways and means were looked at, the penny became the most obvious way to do it. It made sense for the county at the time, but it was driven, Franny's absolutely right, it was the crisis of the comet, and the ancillary additional benefit was the roads program for the county and for the cities and the municipalities. So the environment was very, very different, driven in a different way. There was a lot of cynicism uh, uh, about that. Uh, and now, because you're doing such a good job, common and public transportation is almost out of sight, out of mind. You're taking care of the people you're supposed to take care of. You're kind of generally visibly out there. I don't remember a big controversial issue in six months and maybe a year that you had. So the good news is you're doing well. The bad news is you're doing well. So we're not, they're not thinking about us and we got to figure out how to get that attention. So, so what we need to do is put a, a cost amount to what we want to do going forward. Yes, sir. When you're ready for me, I'll, I'm going to throw out a whole process for you know a, a process for you with the time on the calendar. That's in sync with the other things you've already heard. Uh, but but I'm just probably going to come at you a little more uh, with a real serious time issue on your table. Franny was right of all the things that have been done. Franny is right on all the things that have been done previously. Um, and, and Overture, you please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you've probably got somewhere in between 30 days and six weeks to put something on their table because that train's moving. And yeah, I'll talk that's, about that's, it. That sounds about right. And, and, you know, when you talk about that, think about it. You can't contract with a vendor to do a study. Right? I mean, we got to figure out, we, you, have to figure out how to move very, very quick or other people are going to be making your decisions for you. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to talk more about, you know, whenever we get to that part of everything. And, and, and uh, Mr. Vice Chair, if I may be recognized. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And certainly I'm not suggesting we do a study because uh, you're right, Mr. Silva, we don't have that kind of time uh, on our hands. Uh, but certainly we need to figure out sooner than later uh, what we're going to need monetarily, uh, you know, to continue to fund the comment, uh, you know, beyond, you know, this current penny. So I'm not, I'm, I don't have the subject matter expertise to say how fast or how soon that can be done, but certainly the sooner, the better. Mr. Walker. And again, I'm not trying to get out of my box and in, invade the policy, you know, discretion of the board, but in this, it just reminded me, a player that was very important last time, Franny, correct me if I'm wrong, was the current contractor that the, that the what's it called the Comet, that the, that the public transportation had. They were vested in this to keep on going for a future contract. Those companies have a lot of resources on planning and that kind of executive expertise. 
they're already contracted with you. So that might be a fast way to see if they might have some kind of that kind of planning expertise that they could bring in that you don't have to read. Con, you know, you don't have to rebid, recontract, et cetera, et cetera, as an advisor. For them. So that might be one direction that you go. Part of the reason this is real important, and again, Mr. Walker, please correct me because I heard the same presentation last week from Stan Tech that you did. They came up with, I guess it's kind of an arbitrary, 15 years life of this thing that would raise $2.2 billion. When I looked at the needs, the $2.2 billion, probably only reflects about 50%. Uh, it's probably, it, it takes about an additional 50% of that to get what the needs were. As Mr. Walker said, they had full projects based on the recommendations that they were getting from municipalities, the city, the COG, the et cetera, the projects that were on the board or that, or that had already been spoken before or that came up in the community meetings they've had for the previous six weeks or, or, or so on that. And with those projects, they came up with $2.2 billion in need against a projected 15 year $2.2 billion that would be raised. As Mr. Walker has already stated, number one, that doesn't include anything for the common. So if you assume 30% give or take a point or two or whatever that's gonna be, that's part of that underfunding. It doesn't include any of the current penny unfunded projects because mm -hmm. the penny didn't stretch that far. Right. So do those automatically go back on the table and add that number? And finally, this is only a technical consultant's report. It doesn't have any of the input from the individual council members of what they might want or demand or need or have. So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff here, which is why I feel the urgency for you, even when you talk about 2.2 billion, there is there still looks to me to be a north of 3 billion. Now, now, Mr. Walker, you might have heard or know something differently, but that's how it read to me in that meeting the other day. No, I, I think you're right. And, and and maybe this is a question for, for Franny or Pam, but uh, when you do a capital penny, are you limited when it comes to the dollar amount? Because I was wondering why 15 years was even bandied about, right? Like I know with the current penny, it's, you know, 22 years. And with what was proposed, I want to say recommended, but what was proposed uh, during our work session last week was 15 years, uh, 2.2 billion. So, and maybe that's a question now that I, that I, that I, that I ought to ask of Ray Jones, who gave the presentation along with Stantec. But Franny, can you speak to whether or not there's a cap uh, on what a, I guess, a uh, capital penny can generate? The capital, the, the transportation penny, unlike capital transportation, penny, I'm sorry, penny, I'm sorry, transportation. Yeah, the, the transportation penny has a... Um, the the first of either reaching a dollar amount or a year or a period of time. So if the first penny was for 22 years or 1.1.2 billion, uh, we're obviously reaching the 1.2 billion way before the 22 years. And right. so if if uh, you're looking at a 15 year um, horizon for the next penny for penny two, then either the dollar amount or 15 years. Um, and you know, there's, it'll be, it'd be very difficult, I think, to get a, it's hard to, to estimate and project what a penny will bring in over 10, 15, or certainly 20 years. But I think that's one of the pieces of the puzzle that, that the county, um, will, will need to put together the, um, I, 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 I wasn't part of that presentation, so I don't know why you would pick 15 years. Right. Uh, Except that 15 years is is approximately the the time frame that um that the first penny has has been alive and you know it's time to get it renewed so maybe a 15 year um, window is is a good one um, I would I'm not advising the county but I would advise the county <clears throat> that that as you if you pick a number of years less than the maximum that you might want to play around with the looking into the future 
for the, the next reauthorization so that you can try if possible to, to link it to um, two years before, so you could have another referendum two years before the expiration of, of your pen. And I got you. The, um, the, the disadvantage of, of overestimating is that people have an expectation that you can't meet. The advantage of overestimating is that you can, you know, potentially get the benefit of the, the pen and growing faster than, than you would, would project today. Uh, Mr. Walker, I had the same question about why they shorted it or made it 15. By the way, for what it's worth to everybody, when they were asked that question, Franny, their answer was, I think there's two or three or four other counties that have some form of a transportation penny on the ballot and they're doing running it 15 years. So I think the consultants just tried to get in alignment there. But Mr. Walker, I didn't see any reason why we would short ourselves on either time or revenue made, because frankly, whether it's 15 or 22, it's not going to make 10 votes difference in November. Right. In, in terms of the ability to do things like that. But at least I, I wanted this room to know that in the and the consultant's report has no council involvement yet. It has no political, it had no county council people, right. at least to my knowledge. It was all staff and consultant driven. <laughs> and that was just the first report they got from consultants right. that, that council heard last week. And, and, and real, by and, the way, and, they got that from the city too. Now I don't know where from the city. I don't know if that's a council, what council saying it wants. I don't know if that's administration or whatever it is. But that was an example of the reports that were embedded in the recommendations based on the input they're getting from different different pieces of the community. Mr. Vice Chair, may you may I be recognized? We the staff is going to start working on. Uh, what we have accomplished so far since 2012 with the penny. So we'll have what, what we've done over the years. And as far as going forward, uh, relieve some of the concerns or fear here is that we have outlined uh, what we would like to do for the future to increase service to the community. And that will, that uh, I'm guessing we'll probably have to present to the board, but that will be, we will have that prepared uh, definitely within uh, by the next month. So I just want to relieve any concerns or fears that we may have, but we are thinking about this and are working on this so we can have this prepared and, and ready for approval going forward. But how about uh, uh, any additional building costs that we anticipate, say, 20 years down the road? We will, we will, you know, Estimate that as far as building on on top of the transit system currently. Yes. So what we will have is a one to. I mean, physical plant. Uh, for facilities, we can we can definitely include that part. Uh, what we were thinking initially is the service level. So what we will include is the facility level also, going forward. Um, however, we'll we'll plan it out to where one to three years we will do this, but three to five we will do this, five to seven, seven to ten. So we will have outlines. So we have goals and objectives that we need to meet as we go forward. And I think that'll be a, a good presentation to the board, to the county council, as well as to the public. Mr. Bennett, uh, on a in a mobile, what is what is our we, no, I, be in. I think that's more of a projected project total cost placeholder as we move forward. And I, I just, I, I would, I would, I'm sorry, Councilman Walker had his hand up. Uh, did you, did you? I, I, I did, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to interrupt you, Councilman Brennan. If you want to continue on, just finish your thought and then, and I, and I can go after you. I know I've talked uh, enough. I, I just, do we not have a lot of that already pulled together, Maurice? I mean, I feel like if we know what what our annual operating budget is, we can quickly do some growth models based on a percentage of growth for the 15 to 20 years and really pull that together. I, I, I don't think we have, we can't wait till next month to have this package together. Um, 
I think well, I was going to suggest and, and turn turn to uh, Mr. Walker for confirmation. A self-imposed goal would be, I would think, by the end of April, y'all need to be ready to, to put that, to give something to the county. Correct. From, from our perspective, it was just that we would present that to the board for the board approval if that isn't something that's necessary. So that's why it was... That's why the no, I, I definitely do we do this, if we don't have the whole board on the same pace, then then we've done something wrong. So I completely yeah. think yeah, we need to go that that yeah, path. That's why we're looking at the thirty days. Okay, is that just based on when we have the next call meeting? Correct. Yeah, you, know, you, you all might want to think about uh, talking to Chairman Teresio and if if you could find a date or time for a special meeting that focus just on this vision 2030 or vision 2040, whatever you know, number y'all want to put in there um, so that the focus can be on this report that, that the staff is bringing and have it hashed out. I'm a little concerned that if it's just added to the regular board meeting that will be coming up here in what, 10 days, I guess, um, uh, a week from this Wednesday, that there might not be enough time or the board might not have enough energy to do a whole board meeting and deal with, with this question because this one is obviously uh, very important and um, you know you just wanna make sure you've got time for the board to weigh in. <coughs> Mr. President, on the, on the, when y'all look at the finance, 2012, each year show you some type of increase. Yes, we, if we run that out to present, that should give us a, you know, a percentage there. And then we should top that with something what we- 8%. Right, or whatever yeah. we're planning. And yes. that should be a good. Yes, sir. We will, we will have that lined out very, very quickly, if we need to accelerate that model, we can we can do that. Uh, I have I have uh, uh, a person on standby that will be able to assist me in generating that model for us very quickly. So, Mr. Pearl, we we might want to contact the um, consultants for the county because in order for them to make a projection, they have assumed some growth model. And it might be good for us to follow the same growth model unless we look at it and it seems like it doesn't work for us, but that might help keep us in sync with the, the numbers that county council's looking at. Okay. And I, I, I doubt it's, it's not, I, I don't think, David Beatty, I think is, is the one leading the, um, the consulting and we could contact David. I don't see any problem with him sharing their cost model or, or their growth model uh, with us. Yeah, I do think that's very important to understand how they're, are they, are they taking into account a snapshot of population growth um, for all that to determine that, that solid penny number. So I think that is very important for us to match up with that. And one of the things this group may want to do when you have your first next get together, hopefully pretty quick, is maybe ask uh, uh, David from, from uh, Stantec to come and give you a just a sense of what they base that on or how they're looking at projections for whatever guidance that would give to you for a broader understanding. And I can tell you this, if I may be recognized, Mr. Vice Chair, um, we know that when uh, Stantec uh, generated their estimates, um, they took into account inflation, but also the numbers are slightly inflated uh, because we know with the, well, we at least we remember from the first penny, uh, they were, uh, I think there was one of the criticisms, if you will, was they thought the estimates were off. Maybe they came in. Uh, too low. And so mm -hmm. that led to, I guess, some projects having to be uh, de-scoped or what have you. So uh, it's my understanding this time around, they certainly decided to take a, a little more 
I guess, liberal, if you will, uh, approach with respect to the numbers. Just ensure that uh, that we don't find ourselves in the position of, um, you know, of having projects that where we don't have the adequate funding. Yeah. And the other thing too, I I, I will say, um, while you know the needs assessment, or at least the price tag for all the projects came back to like two point two billion, which would eat up all the revenue. Uh, understand uh, or projected revenue. Uh, please understand that there are probably a number of projects that were included as part of that needs assessment that may be in the pipeline uh, for the state to take care of. You know, that was something uh, that was mentioned to us. Uh, so it's, again, it's a needs assessment. It doesn't mean that uh, council is going to accept all of those projects. Uh, and, even, and even if we wanted to accept all the projects, inevitably, a good number of them will go unfunded, like with the current penny, just because it doesn't take into account transit. And with the proposed ordinance language that we're looking at, there are going to be three categories. And transportation is one of the three categories. Uh, so I could assure you that the comet will not get the shaft. I, I, and so if I gave anyone uh, any pause earlier with my comments, or if I sound like an alarmist, that wasn't my intention, wasn't uh, to, to get us, you know, skittish about this whole thing. Uh, but I would just say, uh, as soon as we can, let's get um, get information over uh, to the county so that way they can uh, we can take into account uh, the needs of the comment uh, for the next you know 10, 15 years or what have you, or however long. Mr. Uh, Councilman Walker. Yes, sir. Do you anticipate the uh, comment receiving 30% uh, you want us to give you a percentage we would want? Yeah, I would say, Mr. Fergus, uh, because with my understanding right now, the comment is getting 28% uh, of the penny. And so, but, but I don't know if last time around that was the number that was thrown out. Or is twenty eight percent because that's just based on uh, the needs that the comet has operationally and uh, capital and, and other things, right? Uh, so I don't I don't think it would be prudent for us to take the approach. We're just going to throw out a percentage uh, that we are seeking from the revenues. I just think we uh, take a look at what we need as far as our budget is concerned, right? And uh, and any other needs that we have. That number this time around could be higher than 30%, right? It could be 31%. I don't know. Um, but I just wouldn't settle on a percentage. I would just, or I would say, let's figure out uh, what's it going to cost to run the comment for the next 10, 15 years. And whatever that number is, that's what we send over. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Because we could be shortchanging ourselves, uh, Mr. Vice Chair, if we just say 30%, right? Right. Now, when I was saying that we can anticipate, you know, not published, but in this distribution, we somewhere in the 30 percent range of the spending. But that's what I, you know, requesting. But one sure. other thing, we anticipate within the next 10, 15 years, something real should we in think, include anticipated costs in it up because there will be some costs. What do you think? Are you asking me, uh, Mr. Vice Chair? I'm just throwing that out there. Anybody. Okay. Well, I would say, uh, Mr. Furges, if, if that is where the comet wants to go, why not include it? Right? I mean, especially if we have a number for it. Yeah, that's, the, that's the problem. Yeah. See, a lot of that be federal funding will. But if you, if, you know, if we, if we <clears throat> plan strategically, Mr. Vice Chair, project based for you know a future intermodal desire that has that 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 rail infrastructure included in it that makes the alternative funding sources like the federal more, you know more appetizing um, we have invested in the infrastructure now we just need the operations and the physical plant from federal funding to put it into place 
So can we, Mr. Vice Chair, I guess I would want to get to action items to, for, for the next meeting. I guess the first, my first request, Mr. Vice Chair, is can we schedule a meeting in two weeks at the same time, Monday, the April, I'm not sure when exactly that is, where we can hear from Stantec. I can, I can I suggest that since we do have a board meeting coming up, that we put the permission from the chair, just change that board meeting because this and all the board members here going forward. So we're going to have to piecemeal the information back. Put, what's your thoughts? So when is the board meeting? It's on the 27th, March 27th. Has the agenda been put out yet? No. Oh, it, it has not. It's not. Well, yeah, I mean, would it be appropriate just to have Stantec come to that meeting and yeah. do the rundown? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah, I think that's that's a wonderful idea. We should extend that invitation. The, the staff could also be working on an outline um, as um, Mr. Pearl said that they've got information and um, start start to put together the, the categories and, and potential numbers. And again, looking at that 2020 um, uh, vision might be helpful. And we can certainly get that around to everybody. Since uh, rep there, it's in several cities. Would they have some type of guidance or information? Would they have been through this? Uh, I would. I would have to defer to Mr. Cooksey on that. But I. I have uh, uh, a, a colleague that that I've worked with in the past, and they have they have worked uh, on these situations in the past as well. So they would be. Uh, a quick turnaround for us so we would have that uh, available for the board meeting so so how do you engage that consultant does that fall under the 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 pr procurement level yes okay. and, and uh miss andrews and i are going to be discussing that after this meeting and that's that's an executive director decision that you can just make and, and run with it right yes sir. okay Now that's consultant does have expertise in oh here we go. All right. Anything else? Uh, uh, my our original intention, Ryan and I for coming in was to start with kind of a big overview of the strategic analysis of where all this is. We got right into the meat of actually your role. But if, if you, and I see we're almost at the end of the hour, but if you give me about five minutes, I do want to just paint a picture for you of where we're at or, or how we see it. And by the way, the way we're looking at this at the end of the day, and we're outcomes related, all of it is geared to winning in November. None of it matters. And so, so it's not just the product, it's the process that we get there with. And, and so one of the things we're looking at are the steps that it takes to get there. We've talked about a significant one, which is the visioning and the planning that both you and the county have on what's next. We also believe that going through that process, we cannot encourage strongly enough that as much as this is done collaboratively and with consensus, we've already determined there's more wants than gots. So everybody's gonna be dissatisfied to some extent about some piece of this but we can't show it. If we don't row together, it won't get there in none of it and none of it will happen as you, as you go through that um, uh, process, if you will. The third thing I wanted to bring to your attention, and if you didn't cover it, if you didn't notice it, there was an article last week in the paper in the state, either Thursday or Friday, that was about the, yeah, we read it. the, the, the meeting. Now, now, if you haven't, and we've got copies, if you want to reread it, that's the story we don't want. That is the narrative that we cannot live with for the next eight months, which is just all the issues of how it began, all the controversies between how you determine funding and who gets what and what's. That's exactly the story. We have to, to define and develop the narrative 
that that gives the public something that they really haven't had since you know since the campaign to put the penny on to begin with are all the incredible accomplishments and the metrics that both you've made as public transportation and that the county has made with the infrastructure as well as the impact of that infrastructure with with taxes with new jobs with with employment with new businesses located quality of life safety etc cetera, etc cetera. that's not out there mr walker sometimes i think that even the the council members don't know in the aggregate of what they've done and what mr walker said is very very true that that for everybody on council, I think except Paul Livingston, it is all their first rodeo on an issue like this, bringing it to bear, dealing with it publicly, the politics around it, ballot mm -hmm. question, et, et cetera, et cetera. So the campaign and the messaging that's been recommended, and you've seen part of it with yours, is to get these metrics out there. And that show was put together for you that was first shown, I think, about in November and saw any of you who have not seen it or have not been exposed to that, you might want to use a, a meeting, a board meeting to at least have that run run for you. And we need that, that out there as much as can any of the board members or others who are willing to make presentations and get all your good metrics out there. We have developed the same thing working with county staff for the county of the kind of metrics that they've done. If they stay on schedule, and as of now, they're still on schedule, uh, Mr. Walker, I believe that's going to be presented to council as a whole at your at your regular council meeting tomorrow night, I believe, by Mr. Brown. I don't know if that work has gotten before the individual council members yet or it's just still in staff's hands for all of that, but it's very, very, very strong in terms of what those metrics are and the things that have been and the things that have been done. So what we're hoping is, is to spend the next 60 or 90 days really pushing out both for it. And, and we had developed the, the infographics and Pamela has been working with Flock at Rally on a, on a getting it out there campaign, both paid and free social media, et cetera. Mm -hmm. We're doing the same thing and prepared to launch that for the county once they get unveiled, if, if they stay on schedule for tomorrow night and to spend 60 or 90 days of just pushing all the successes, the metrics of both the Comet and the, and the, the infrastructure uh, uh, implementation to give you all some air cover while both bodies are looking at how to develop the vision for next. Uh, their goal is no later than July 15th and then, then it converts to something else, but that's what we hope to be the activity with a whole lot of outreach of, of getting this information out there to folks. So that would be the only other thing, uh, uh, Mr. Fergus, that, that we're gonna add, unless you have any other any other questions. Okay. I guess my question, Mr. Silver, is in this, in this pre-planning, we need to recognize and understand who the stakeholders in the private sector can be <clears throat> that we need to partner with to really drive this home, the large employers, right? Yes, sir. How, how do we, what, in your opinion, what is the best way to go about bringing them in to participate, you know, as we roll out this, the this successes? Is my, this is my biggest concern for going forward right now. The county and the common pretty much internally have their act together as they're looking at it, as they're looking at the timetable, as they're starting to ask the right questions to develop the right answers to. There's one big difference, and Franny, you might address you might want to address this too is because I guess Brandy and I are a couple of the old warriors. Last time around, there was an equal bit of organization on the outside from the business community, some of the different constituencies. That doesn't exist today. We don't have the same yin and yang right there. And, it, and, and well, it concerns us a lot about getting that started, getting that outreach, getting that partnership done. It's above, we're not engaged, you know, we can't do that on behalf of the Comet or, or you know, you know that, that becomes the polit more of a political campaign activity once it goes there. But we are way behind the eight ball on that compared to yeah. 12 years ago. And, and it's got to be done by, it, it's got to happen at a big leadership level. The elected leaders got to, right. got to, Got to run that rabbit. We should be running that race now. Need to run, and we can we can help advise and do it, but we can't initiate it 
it really is going to take the likes of you that, 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 Walker and others. That that presentation that you talked about, and I, I I would like to see that. I haven't seen it yet. Is that is that to the level to start the conversation with the private sector as we prepare for the ask? Yes, famous last words. I believe, particularly on the county side, that all of this information that we're about to throw out there that's been there, by the way, it haven't, it's not like it's been, it just hasn't been put together. And to, I think it's going to open up a lot of eyes in the aggregate of just how much we've accomplished and to change the story because they're still stuck on the beginning. Yeah. So is the comment presentation included in what's about to be rolled out by the county? It is. What we do, what we did is, and we've coordinated with Pamela and company on this, we took what we think are a key of about four or five of the infographic animations that were specifically, you know, that is totally embedded in your presentation to make that a cutout and a piece of, of the Overview County thing. In fact, there was supposed to be a training session, I think last week, Pamela, last Thursday or something, to get to deeper in the staff, to lay all that out. Something happened with scheduling, and I think it's going to be rescheduled for this Thursday for, for those things. And again, what we don't know is we know what we've given the staff and what they've sent back and where it's edited. We don't know where staff has taken it vis-a-vis -vis their council membership. You know, for final sign-offs and approvals and more questions. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Walker. I'm here, Mr. Burgess. Do you have anything else to add? No, um, nothing else to add. Uh, not, well, one final thing, and I think this is relevant, but uh, tomorrow night we're going to vote on, I believe, a resolution um, that defines, or not so much defines, but expands uh, the role of TPAC uh, in this process. Um, we're going to uh, expect TPAC to make recommendations uh, to council. Uh, you know, uh, they're supposed to be, I guess, the eyes and ears of the various municipalities. And so um, they will be uh, fully engaged uh, in this process going forward. Um, Mr. Vice Chair, sure. Um, Councilman Walker, that TPAC is um, assigned members through the delegation. Is that correct? Uh, no. So TPAC is assigned members from the various municipalities. So, for instance, Richland County, I believe we have two, maybe three uh, members. I can't recall off the top of my head. I think the city of Columbia has two. Arcadia, Arcadia has, Arcadia Lakes has one. I think um, Irmo may have one, Blythewood and Eastover. And so there are about two vacancies on TPAC, but usually it's the uh, the local municipality who appoints someone. Okay. Uh, Will, I think you're, Mr. Brennan, I think you're thinking of the, um, the county transportation committee that I think is appointed by... Uh, by the delegation, this TPAC is create is a creation of Richland County Council. Okay, I was just thinking about what's going on in Lexington County with uh, the county and the municipalities and the the funding for roads and transportation projects. So I didn't know. Right, right. I know that structure comes from the delegation. But I want everyone to know that County Council certainly understands uh, the importance of the comment. And I can't say this enough. The comment will not get the shaft. Uh, and I think most of us understand that uh, if there's anything that's going to save the penny in November, it will be uh, public uh, public transit. Uh, folks will complain about, you know, maybe the road didn't get paid, may complain about hard scrabble road. But they may say, well, certain parts of the county got this, well, the party parts of the county didn't get that. But the moment you bring up a comment, uh, folk will usually say, uh, on the heels of complaining about the penny, well, we got to keep the buses going. So. And I, I just want to echo what Councilman Walker is saying. Sit, you have a city council and a mayor and a city staff that are very supportive of the penny and the comment. Uh, so so I, I think we're all going to be on the same kumbaya train. So we, we look forward to that. 
Well, let me ask this question. Are we settled on the role of this committee as far as what, uh, what we, uh, are we settled on our mandate? So, yeah, I mean, I, I think mostly we're just kind of driving the ship, the quick ship, really yeah. push, yeah. push, you know, to get the information, present it to, to you at, at the county and the county staff, and then work with our consultants on next steps in marketing. And, and Mr. Vice Chair, do, do we have a sense from Director Pearl how soon I guess we can get um, some numbers? Uh, it, it would it be possible to get those numbers within a couple weeks? Um, as far as what we anticipate, what our funding needs uh, will be? Yes, he's shaking his head. That's what I'm going to alert him to make sure that he doesn't uh, calculate these numbers low. <laughs> be, di Director Pearl, be liberal with the numbers, okay? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather just err on the side of caution. You know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, a, a little bit of variance, upward var variance. Absolutely. Uh, uh, one other thing, uh, Mr. Silver said something. Uh, uh, if employees were on board uh, the last time, the first thing. The employers? Uh, yes, sir, for the most, if, if, if you remember, Frankly, our foundation to, to project the whole campaign came from the chamber and what Ike McLeese was doing. We used their C104, 10C3, whatever, whatever that is to do the campaign. They took the core, them and the MBLG, as well as some of the major players. Your contractor was a major player on the outside helping, helping fund the so they were all that was really well put together. Frankly, that was what prevailed upon a very reluctant county council to actually put it on the ballot. So we're kind of in reverse. This one's being driven from, from inside government outside. And we gotta get the we've got to get the the business supporting community uh, to make sure we have a campaign in November. Now are those players still around no we're gonna have to read if I if all the key player well Ike's gone. Yeah. It's a whole different world at the chamber. Steve Bench face was a lot of the energy was a lot of the focus of getting the funds raised in terms of that world uh lee bustle who worked with me and lee swears he's done you know he's retired he's you know doing other things and john lumpkin is you know the, the core group who really put that together and drove it again franny's on here and she may think of some that i'm missing and and that's where we have our biggest deficit of of how to make it move how to start reaching out and we so, got so yeah just to make clear how different the situation is the current president head of the chamber of commerce was part of the group that challenged the penny in the litigation so you not only i mean i, I think a, a big step would be just to neutralize him in the chamber because he was definitely, and you could ask Paul Livingston, and Paul's head explodes when you mention this guy's name. So um, the political environment is hugely different than it was um, in 2012, unfortunately. And the whole story that the opponents are going to use all November, all being in November, is going to be about the lawsuit, about their proclaimed mis misuse, misappropriation, misapplication. Uh, that's the stuff we got to. We can't wait till then to do it. That's why we got to get this stuff out now. And we got to have a real strong vision that we are pushing. And by the way, every issue that's good, our opponents will use as a wedge issue. Yeah, the buses, we couldn't win without, without the common in the bus system. Others will try to use that as a wedge issue. Well, I'm, I'd be for the buses, but I'm not for wasting all the money on this. Or, or let the people who ride the bus pay for their own. You know, this uh, that kind of wedge stuff, where what projects go, all those things are going to be in the environment that we have to try to take on because the opponents will, will try to use everything as a wedge issue, which is why I referenced that story from last Thursday or Friday. That's the story we're going to be battling and that we got to change and hopefully right from the get go. Mr. Vice Chair, I have a question for Mr. Silver and Ms. Heiser can chime in on this as well. Yes, uh -oh. sir. 
So it's my understanding that the stakeholders or I guess folks in the business community who uh, would uh, be interested in spearheading a, an advocacy campaign, that they uh, they would probably want to see a list of projects, right? But Yes, sir, before they were otherwise finally adopted. I got you. But in addition to, I guess, a list of uh, transportation projects, would they want to see, I guess, a list of needs or... Uh, or, or whatever, I guess, projects or plans that the Comet uh, has in mind as well? Or is it, or there, is their interest more so in just the transportation projects rather than transit? Uh, yes, sir. It, it is both. It is both. But if this projects now to where it was last time, they don't care and don't pretend to be have any expertise in how the Comet ought to run. They just want it run well. But right, in where right. it goes, how it serves, they just want to know there's a viable system and a vibrant system here, you know, that takes care of people and jobs and the economy and et cetera, et cetera. And they never got into the weeds on that. Frankly, we have a lot of trouble getting them to even pay much attention to it as long as everything's going well. Okay. All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 <laughs> well, Ms. Gleason's voting by proxy for me, so. Yeah. <laughs>